Well, hello again. Thank you for joining me online. Uh, this is a Sunday morning message for New Life Ministries for July 3rd. Uh, let's get right to it. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they shall be filled. Went on to say, verse 17, Do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Truly I say it to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished. Get this point. Some people say, well, that was Old Testament. This is new. Jesus said, until heaven and earth pass away, not one bit of this law is going away. He's stressing the importance of knowing God's word, knowing God's commandments, and obeying them forever. Uh, anyway, whoever then annuls one of the least of these commandments, teaches others to do the same, shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever keeps and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I say to you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Most of us know when we think of the scribes and Pharisees, well, they were God's people, but they were so religious that they didn't recognize Jesus as the son of God. They sent him to the cross. Uh, well, on the good side of God's people, scribes and Pharisees, they were expert in the law. They were committed and dedicated to knowing the word, learning it, and carefully obeying the instruction in God's word. And God is warning us through Jesus of the importance of knowing and following God according to his word. All right, let's continue. I've said on your caption here, this is what God is doing in America right now. And I said from the White House down to you and me as individuals and as church members. And I said, and the guy next door, that means somebody that doesn't know a thing about God isn't necessarily a Christian. But let's look at what God is saying to the world right now. Uh, John uh, 16 and 7. Nevertheless, I'm telling you the truth. It is to your benefit that I go away. If I don't go away, the counselor, and read the chapter, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. The counselor will not come to you. If I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world about sin, righteousness, and judgment. God is talking to the world through the Holy Spirit, and especially in America right now, about sin, righteousness, and judgment about sin because they do not believe in me. If you have not come to Christ, if you're not a believer in Jesus, the Holy Spirit is warning you that your sin will have consequences in this life and for eternity. Your sin will send you to hell unless you come to Christ and receive forgiveness. Holy Spirit is talking to us about that. Uh, about righteous, because, righteousness, because I'm going to the Father and you'll no longer see me. Jesus says to his followers, just like I taught you about righteousness. You know what righteousness is? Following God his way, obeying the instruction he gives. How do you know what that, what that instruction is? It's in his word. Jesus taught us about righteousness with the life he lived and the words he taught. He, and and he, he said the Holy Spirit is speaking to us about righteousness right now. God is calling every believer to believe God and follow God according to God's word. And finally, he says about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. You know, there's final judgment, eternal judgment, a lot of levels of judgment. When God sends judgment, he gets rid of sin and evil and corruption. And if people don't re repent, he removes them and stops them from their performing their evil and their uh, being corrupt. He's, he's working on that right now. And he's speaking to America that it's time to repent, time to come back to God and follow him according to his word, 
or judgment will be coming. So we need to know what the Holy Spirit is saying to us right now. All right, I said it this way on your note there. The fix for everything, follow Holy Spirit into holiness and righteousness. Romans 8, one of my favorite chapters, it tells us how to follow God by following the Holy Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. We are always going to be under a law with God. Before Jesus came to earth, went to the cross, uh, we had Moses' law. And, you know, it was intended for righteousness. It was ten, intended to show us how to follow God. But because of our sinful nature, we failed, we disobeyed, we rebelled against God. And the result of that disobedience was death, separation from God in this life and eternal death, which is separation from God forever, law of sin and death. Now, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus looks like this. Now that we come to Christ, we exercise faith in his sacrifice for us at the cross. We make him the Lord of our life. When we do that, God forgives us, washes and cleanses us in the blood of Christ through the sacrifice. We become holy and the Holy Spirit now lives inside of us. And all we need to do to operate in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is obey the Holy Spirit. Learn to know his voice, hear him regularly. We claim to have a relationship with God. If I stop you in the parking lot and ask you, what's the last thing the Holy Spirit said to you? If you're in a relationship, you shouldn't have to go back too far to know what he is saying to you. That's what I'm teaching you today. What is the Holy Spirit saying to America? We need to hear, we need to receive the instruction, we need to obey it. And if we do, God can straighten out the problems in our nation, in our families, in our churches, in our personal lives. That's what God wants to do. Let's hear from the Holy Spirit and obey the instruction that he gives. All right, this, this heading says an obligation. Here's the scripture. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, not to the sinful nature, to live according to it. If you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. Do you know that's what's going on in America right now? We have govern, government leaders. We have rulers and judges that are teaching and even passing legislation that is contrary to God. They're passing laws that support the sinful nature. Sometimes Christians live following their flesh, following sin. And God says, don't give in to that. It'll produce death. You'll die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you'll live because those who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. He's saying as children of God, we don't give in to sin. We don't give in to sinful impulses. We don't give in to our sinful nature. We follow the Holy Spirit who will help us put to death sin in our flesh and we can start living as children of God, obeying God, being useful to him to bring his blessings and his provision and his protection in our nation and in our personal lives. All right, Romans 8, 26. Here's a key verse. Likewise, the spirit helps in our weaknesses. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. I'm telling you the fix for everything from America, for America is following the Holy Spirit. Step number one, start praying. Step number one, Start praying more than ever and pray in the spirit. That means you pray in tongues. Let the Holy Spirit fill you and open your mouth and speak in that unknown language. The Bible says when we pray in an unknown language, our, our understanding is unfruitful. We may not know what we're saying, but he says we pray in perfect agreement and harmony 
with the Holy Spirit and the will of God. It's time for the church to start praying in the spirit. The step one of today's teaching, you want to follow instruction from the Holy Spirit? Pray in the Holy Spirit and stay with it until you hear. And when you hear, obey. This is what God will do to straighten out personal things in your life. This is what God will do to straighten out America. I, verse 18, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. All this is saying, we're going through some hard times as a nation. God says, pray, seek the Holy Spirit. Pray, 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 get instruction from the Holy Spirit, obey the Holy Spirit, and God can save America. The whole creation is waiting for the children of God to rise up and start acting like the children of God. Here's our note to end on. We know all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. We love to quote that scripture. Well, no matter how bad it gets, God will get some good out of it. That is true. This is the end of a teaching that says we must follow the Holy Spirit. If we're in a tough time, if we're in a, in a deadly, dangerous, horrible situation, if we will pray, seek the Holy Spirit, receive instruction from him and obey it, then God will turn it to good. And that's what we need. Let's pray. Father, I sow this word in the good ground of every heart. I'm believing we will hear you speaking to us about sin, righteousness, and judgment. We'll follow the instruction you give us. We'll see our, our country saved from the corruption and the evil that is trying to take over. We'll see our country saved from Satan's plan to rob our freedom through communism and through deadly sins. And we'll see the Holy Spirit and God rescue us and Jesus be restored as Lord of our nation and America becoming one nation under God. We'll see that as we follow the Holy Spirit and he will work all things together for our good once again. Father, I, again, thank you for, well, <laughs> let me say this to you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me online and I better go for now, but I'll see you again soon. God bless.